I thought we rolled our luck for, for the first 20 minutes, it's fair to say. Uh, we, we got some really good blocks in, we defended the box excellently, which which club doesn't come in after ride the luck in the Premier League. And then we grew into the game on the back of that and I said to the players, I was really I was really pleased with the belief that we showed with the with the ball at our feet, we passed it. Well, we were so close on how many times on that counter-attack to just find that last pass and find that moment, we just couldn't find it. And We come out of the second half, we've had the big chance through Fraser, and I thought we had a grip of the game at that point. I thought we were in, we were in control and I turned to my left and Eric's bringing them three on. Casemiro, Eriksson and Rashford and, uh, you know, all in all, I thought it was a harsh scoreline on us if I'm being totally honest with you. Um, but proud of, the, proud of the performance, yeah. And a great night for fans despite the result. Yeah, you could, fans are not stupid, are they? You know, they can see when they see a performance and I thought we gave them that. Um, they've travelled up a long way, there's no trains back to London, so God knows what time they're going to get back. So, with total respect and thanks to them. But I think the only thing I promise when I come in the job is that we'll, the players will run through brick walls for the shirt, and I think they've seen that tonight. Particularly some of the youngsters as well. Eric invited me in five minutes after the game, and he's talking around some of the, the quality that our youngsters showed, so that, that gives me pride. Um, we disappoint with the goals. The first one, Anthony, we have to show him on the outside. I mean, he comes in, it's a world-class finish, but we've got to do a little bit better on that. And then you can only stand in admiration with Casemiro's pass for that second goal. That he zipped it. It's like watching Steven Gerrard at that point with that pass. It was top, top class. That's the level. And uh, and obviously Rashford does what Rashford does at the very end. And, uh, you know, we threw two strikers on. We went for it. I felt I felt we were in, in with a shout towards the end, and even if we could have got it to penalties. But... It wasn't to be, as I say. I'm disappointed with the with, with losing the game. I know it's Man United, I know it's Old Trafford, but it's important we're trying to get a winning culture into this, this football club. And um, having said that, I'm very, very proud. Got a question back here. Adin, uh, great performance from the lads tonight. Um, you've been here a few games now, and you've sort of shifted the momentum side. You've had a few wins uh, recently. How important is it now, off the back of a good performance like tonight, to kick that back into the league form and kick on to the, the playoffs? Yeah. Hopefully? Was you listening to me post-match talk? Like, this can't be after the Lord Mayor's show now. We've got Barnsley to take care of at the weekend. And we kick-started it with a win at Portsmouth. The fans started to see something in that game. We then backed it up with back-to-back -back wins at, uh, at, the, at the weekend at the Valley, which was important in front of our fans. We've not done that enough this season prior to me coming in. They've had good results. 5-1 against Plymouth is the outstanding one. Not had enough consistency, so that's the bread and butter. That's what we have to take care of now. The lads have got to recover quickly. Um, but we just, we just continue on the day-to-day, -day. we continue setting daily standards. Again, something Eric's focused on here is getting that culture right and there's, there's a real belief around the place, which in two weeks in the job I couldn't change a lot physically, I couldn't make them fitter or pass the ball any better in that short space of time. But you can certainly affect the, the psychology and the mindset of a, of a group of people and I think we're doing that and that, that's pleasing. I guess, sorry. I'm just going to ask, um, this, the owners, uh, the current owners and, and the possible new owners were here, does it show the value of Charlton that you have 9,000 fans here seeing their heads up and, and all these players as well who played really well against one of the best teams in England? I talked in the week about showing ourselves in the best light on the pitch and off the pitch. Um, we knew the backing that we were going to get. Um, yeah, there was a connection there, isn't there? You can see that. And even with all the uh, rumours around off the pitch, the players have shown real focus. And it's not it, it's not got to me, you know, I'm focused on my job. Um, I'm, the, I'm the manager of the football club. Um, but I deal with the players on a day-to-day basis and, and the staff and the culture around the training ground and that's where my focus is, certainly in the short term and uh, outside of that what will be will be I suppose but no, it was important It was important that we used tonight to become a, to come out of it a better football club and I think we've done that. Thank you. Um, if you show this level of performance week in week out in League One, just how far do you think um, Charlton can go in the season? <laughs> You're always trying to get me to say an outlandish statement. The biggest thing I said when I come in is, we'll, is we need to get away from the danger zone. It's the lowest the club's ever been in its history, 18th in League One when I took over. Um, we've had five games in two and a half weeks, no time to really prepare from a training session point of view. So we needed to get up, we needed to appreciate where we were and get away from the danger zone. We needed to set mid table as our target, and we've done that in four games. Now we can't get away from thinking that we're still in a little bit of danger because it's only nine points, but we're certainly looking upwards and, and keep showing the players belief around that and showing them what's possible will we'll help that so hopefully we'll add a couple more players in the window as well we're in the market for and you've been linked with them sorry I want to get his name right I think it's Edu or Ida from um, uh, Blackburn Rovers on loan um, is that going to happen I've not seen any I've 
can you, can you imagine me taking my focus away from preparing against Man United? Um, that's negligible. It's a sackable offence to, to not use all your focus on the next game, and I'll be doing that on Barnsley. As soon as I wake up in the morning, Barnsley becomes my focus. All I'd say on that, I get your question totally, I respect uh, your question, but I'll say what I've said from the beginning, which is we're in the market for good players and we're, in, and we're trying to come out of this window with a better squad than we go into it with. It's slightly unbalanced. I'm not going to sit here and talk about what positions we're looking at, how long it's going to take to get them in, how many we're going to bring in uh, and what names they are because we'll do our work quietly. It's the right way to do it. We don't need to start alerting any other clubs and, and, and giving even more expectation around we're going to sign this player by whatever date. We'll, we'll work hard. We are working hard. And as a fan myself, I know how excited it is in the window. And we've, where well, are we now? Day 10, I think. And it's still been a little bit quiet, but don't think that that's because there's not hard work going on and, and, uh, and we'll continue with that. Thanks, Dean. Especially, and as a United fan, are you now hoping <coughs> we'll go on and maybe get to Wembley and win this Yeah, game? of course, yeah. Yeah, why not? Um, maybe I get to take my kids to another cup final. Um, we're racking them up, me and my dad and my brother and whatever else. So, yeah, of course. I've got so much respect for Eric. I've, I've watched from afar. Eric Tenard looking at the way that he's got the connection back with the fans and the way he's focused on the culture, the Ronaldo situation, the Brentford debacle early in the season. Um, and having met him there for 10, 15 minutes, it, it's an insight into what top level management's about. So, yes, me, uh, me respect for him has gone even higher. So, yeah, of course, I would, I would hope that they would go and win the tournament. Question, Greg? Uh, how special was it for you managing a team at Old Trafford? Uh, it was pretty magical. I'm not going to say anything else. It was it was an incredible experience. During the during the game, from minute one to the end, 94 minutes, it was I was totally focused. So I could have been coaching me under eight daughters team. I was totally focused in the moment. But the bit around it and the bit afterwards and all the all the the stuff around it was. You know what? It just shows you. I've, I've stood and sat in every single corner of this stadium uh, over the years, and never once did I really believe that I'd stand in that in that technical area. So what it shows you is that if you work hard enough and you get a little bit of luck on your side, which you need, anything's possible. And I've been on the canvas a few times to be fair, but you've just got to keep getting back up and keep throwing them punches. And for that reason, more for my family. Listen, it's a, my dad's next door, 70 years old. He's been coming, he's been coming here for 60 odd years. And wow, for him to see his son coming out with his, his other son and all his, his daughters around, he's, he's a pretty special moment. Yeah, you mentioned about the rumours about the club. Yeah. Um, and I know you're relatively recent in. The fans are obviously concerned. Is it? Would it be an advantage to get clarity, or can you just distance yourself from all of them? I wouldn't say I distance myself from it. I, we've got to respect where our supporters are coming from because there's obviously a lot of rumours around and from where the club's been in the past to where it is now. You can see that they're, they're not happy about that. Um, all my focus is on is on the playing squad, is on the improving the working environment. Um, I want everybody to come into Sparrows Lane, our training ground in the morning, whether you're in the kit room, the kitchen, whether you're the so-called star player, I don't, I don't care. I want everybody to feel valued and it was a bit flat a few weeks ago and we've, in a short space of time we've managed to really affect that and that makes, that fills me with pride because I believe in people. And I believe in people who want to do well for themselves and empower the guys next to them. And you can see that already. Um, other than that, I understand your question, but my focus is absolutely on that. And I can't take any, any, anything away from it. Any other questions, Tool? No coach. Sorry? No coach. No. You have a coach on you as a game, don't I'm from Salford, innit? <laughs> I'm from Salford. I put it on when I come out and I'm within seconds of... I was sweating, I thought, nah. Um, typical Manchester weather, wasn't it? Um, what part of Salford? Swinton. Same yeah. You look like a Swinton, aren't you? <laughs> you? You were wearing a coat, though. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks so much. See you, David. No problem. Good to see you. Take care. Take care, man. Give me a fine lap for wearing all the...